Hi everyone, welcome to Chevalier's Books on YouTube. We are LA's oldest independent bookstore and 2020 is our 80th year in business. Chevalier's is one of the landmarks in our beloved community of Larchmont Village in Hancock Park. Now tonight we have the great privilege of uncovering the history of this neighborhood with Jane Gilman and Tom Labonge. Tom Labonge served as LA's fourth district city councilman from 2000 to 2015. Tom is a go-to person and has helped Hancock Park residents with their zoning, lighting, preservation, and traffic concerns. His first love, after the family, is Griffith Park, where you can find him hiking every morning beginning at 6 a.m. Tom's job tonight will be to interrogate Jane on her new book, Inside Hancock Park. Jane Gilman is the past editor slash publisher of the Larchmont Chronicle, a newspaper covering mid-city communities including Hancock Park, Winter Square, and the Miracle Mile. She retired in 2015 after 52 years. A native of Rye, New York, she is a graduate of Beloit College in Wisconsin. Pre-publishing, she was a copywriter, recreational director, and psychiatric aide. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand over the stage to these two wonderful speakers, our author Jane Gilman and Tom Labonge, and see where they take us tonight. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. We're at Chevalier's here <laughs> on Largemont, one of the greatest bookstores, not just... Uh, in Los Angeles, but in all of California. And we're here with this very special person, Jane Gilman, who was a pillar of this community and continues to be, who wrote a book all about Hancock Park. Jane, tell me why. All right, Tom, so good to have you here. Well, thank you. You and I go back and have many good memories. Yes. I wrote Inside Hancock Park after I retired from uh, being publisher of the Larchmont Chronicle. Uh, because I knew a lot about Hancock Park and I thought that it would be interesting to people who lived here now or lived here earlier or plan to live here because there's so much history about the neighborhood and it's um, also it was something to go did good to do during my retirement and finally the book was published uh, last month and Chevaliers has been handling it. I'm very grateful for that. And I wrote it to just let people know what happened in the early days and what's, and especially I wrote it to let people know who G. Allen Hancock was. I mean, after all, it's called Hancock Park. I think people should know who the founder of this neighborhood is. That's very good. And, and I, when you speak about it, it's all about neighborhoods, really, in Los Angeles, uh, one of 88 mm -hmm. cities in the county. Uh, there's mm -hmm. many yeah. great cities around, but there's nothing like Los Angeles and our neighborhoods. That's and right. people love our mm -hmm. neighborhoods. And it's interesting, uh, for many years, I'm a Silver Laker, and it mm -hmm. took me a while, but I finally figured out who Herman Silver was, uh, mm -hmm. who was a water yeah. commissioner, who they mm -hmm. named that reservoir for when they first opened, I think, in 1904. But here we are in Hancock mm -hmm. Park. Uh, tell me, it's mm -hmm. so special, and you put this great little book together that everybody's got to come right here on <laughs> right. into Chevalier's and buy this book. Tell me about the uh, Hancock family, and did you ever meet any of them? Well, thank you uh, for asking because, coincidentally, I was very fortunate in meeting uh, Hancock's uh, great-granddaughter. Her name is Jane Brennan, and she lives in San Luis Obispo. And I met his... Um, third wife's uh, brother, Bud Mullen. And because I'd met these people and had gotten so much information about the neighborhood, I really felt it was important to, to talk about Hancock, to write about Hancock. He was, um, he actually, he left Los Angeles and settled in Santa Maria um, in 1925, so his imprint in Hancock Park really was only a few years. The neighborhood celebrates its 100th birthday now. And uh, he uh, was, of course, the founder. And he laid down very strict rules as to how houses were to be built and uh, how much square footage and how much footage, front footage, 50 feet front footage, and uh, utilities in, uh, in the backyard, not in the front. And, uh, he just had a lot of very uh, good uh, aesthetic rules so that the neighborhood would look as nice as it does today. 
Well, it is so special because his Los Angeles grew so fast, they often mm -hmm. just put telephone poles right up in <laughs> front of the streets and uh, put them mm -hmm. in the rear. I'm fortunate to live on a street that was one of the first to get underground in oh. 1925 in Silver yeah. Lake. But mm -hmm. uh, here it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. Then you also think of Hancock uh, mm -hmm. contribution to the county and mm -hmm. Hancock Park oh, itself, yes. at the, yes. where LACMA mm -hmm. is, where the new mm -hmm. uh, Academy Museum, uh, That's right. the Academy of Arts and Sciences for the La Brea mm -hmm. Tar Pits, and how many school mm -hmm. buses have been there and oh, children yes. have learned things. We've all learned much, but you're teaching us more because mm -hmm. you're specifically yes. uh, focused on the neighborhood. How about the people mm -hmm. of the neighborhood? You've probably met so many as a, a co-publisher oh, uh, of the Large Vaughn Chronicle. <laughs> with, uh, for 52 you know, years. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, of course, I didn't meet the early um, celebrities, uh, such as John Wayne or Howard Hughes or Harry Warner, but I did meet Mae West in her later years. In fact, I met her at a press conference, and she insisted on having two telephone books put in the chairs because she's so petite she didn't want to sink into a chair so <laughs> so she sat on the telephone books were instead. they yellow pages or white pages uh, white pages well, absolutely so John. Yeah. yes and you know white was her favorite color uh -huh. because she lived at the ravenswood yeah. and her apartment on the penthouse was all white yeah. everything the furniture everything but um getting back to hancock county park where the museums are Henry Hancock was a surveyor and an attorney. This is Alan's father. And he and his brother purchased the, the uh, rancho, the 4,400-acre acre, uh, acre rancho. And um, he always thought, Henry always thought there, there was oil underneath. But every time he dug, he only came up with water and fossils. And he didn't really. No, some of the fossils, he had no idea they went back 40,000 40, years. So Henry died at uh, 1883, and uh, it wasn't until about uh, 10 years later that oil was discovered on the property, and that's how Ida, his widow, and uh, Henry, I'm sorry, Alan, uh, were able to strike it rich and live the good life from then on. Well, and, you, you think about mm -hmm. like the A.F. Gilmore and uh, mm -hmm. up when they first, where the farmer's market is, it yeah. really was a mm -hmm. oil field and then, uh, excuse me, a dairy, a farm, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the cows would get uh, mm -hmm. oil on their hoofs, <laughs> on their hoofs. <laughs> then they scratched his head, and I remember seeing a picture, there were oil wells all the way from La Cienega oh, through yeah. La Brea, mm -hmm. uh, in that corridor there, yeah. and uh, it's still, it, mm -hmm. the tar leaks out of uh, Curson and mm -hmm. uh, Wilshire, yeah, the, that's the amazing. city barricade always there. I remember I used to have to yeah. go out and straighten it up sometimes. Yeah. But you, you look about the, the, the others who, were, who mm -hmm. lived here. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Nat well, King Cole? That's right. Yeah. Well, when yeah. Nat King Cole, he was not welcomed into the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. That was 1948. And uh, at the time, just before then, the only uh, black people that could live in the neighborhood, African Americans that could live in the neighborhood, uh, were servants, mm. and uh, that, but that was struck down, and eventually uh, Nat and Maria and their daughters lived there, and uh, he died very tragically of cancer. I think he was 45 yeah. at the time. Yeah. But, but others mm -hmm. uh, from Hollywood have lived there? Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes, we've yeah. had our celebrities. Yeah. I think they like the neighborhood because it's, it's a neighborhood. It's not, it doesn't have tour buses going through it. Right. That's really important. Right. And you can send your kids to, um, you know, to the ice cream store or wherever, and, or they can ride, ride their bikes. Yeah, they can There's ride their bikes There's a story once there. that uh, mm -hmm. was told that uh, a bunch of kids were riding their bicycle, and Mom, Muhammad Ali, who mm -hmm. lived just across the street there in Fremont Place, yeah. came up uh, Muirfield there, mm -hmm. and he stopped, and signed all their autographs, and uh -oh. someone told me it yeah. looked like E.T. with all the bikes coming around uh -oh. the little kids one summer. <laughs> but a very cute. special place here. Mm -hmm. Would you consider the boundaries of mm -hmm. Hancock Park? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, so many people don't realize that, and especially real estate people, right. when they're trying to sell a house. But it's Rossmoor to Highland, Melrose to Olympic. And, of course, the, there are 1,100 homes approximately here. And then, of course, the high-rise apartment 
buildings on uh, Rossmore, north of Beverly. Uh, you got the El Royale and right. uh, uh, Country Club Manor, the Ravenswood, and then the very famous um, Mar Mauritania, where uh, John F. Kennedy stayed during the 1960 presidential campaign. Right. And uh, so that's uh, got a lot of history to it as well. Do you know well. who the Sergeant of Arms for the 1960 presidential uh, convention here no. in Los Angeles? John Ferraro. Oh. John Ferraro. Right. Two time All American before <laughs> and after the war. You got to put a plug in for the late great yeah. John Ferraro. Who I yeah, for you're, you're a boss. But you could, I remember. Mm -hmm. Because John lived in Hancock Park. Mm -hmm, that's right. We'd uh, mm -hmm. often, you know, I'd, uh, be helping him uh, mm -hmm. uh, ride his way. But he'd point out a lot of history that mm -hmm. he knew. And he, he showed me the wall that he said Kennedy jumped over when he'd oh. stay there, you know, oh. sometimes. So okay. uh, that uh. was it. But I think he also got a benefit to Hancock Park, although it's just a little lease for Largemont Village. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how that mm -hmm. little commerce center became kind of a magnet for so many people. It did, it know. did. Well, and, and, uh, those were the good old days when uh, we had Safeway and we had other vegetable and uh, meat uh, stores. And of course, fortunately, Chevalier Books uh, has been here for so long. Right. But uh, uh, at one, when we first started the paper in 1963, there was one restaurant, mm -hmm. no coffee shops, yeah. just one restaurant on Larchmont. Yeah. And no businesses were open on Sunday. Right. So things, things have changed. Things have changed. You know, yeah. it, it, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you're part of that change. You helped mm -hmm. bring that parking structure. So, well, that's true. <laughs> you know, could put in there. You and I together. Oh, always. Mm -hmm. But uh, so mm -hmm. the architecture, too, is so special. The oh, historic absolutely. preservation is key. Uh, oh, yes. The homeowners uh, well, association. Well, tell me uh, from your angle, because I know it was not an easy ride. Well, yeah, there was some change in the community, and mm -hmm. some people didn't want government telling them. As I worked for John Ferraro and mm -hmm. the councilman, and and uh, in doing so, uh, there was a big argument. Mm -hmm. But it, I really believed that preservation mm -hmm. was so important. The particular yes. district that John represented went all the way at, uh, at one time mm -hmm. to downtown, across mm -hmm. the Olympic Melrose Corridor, from Fairfax. And I remember we made Angelino Heights the historic mm -hmm. district that it was. Oh, yes. Melrose Hill, mm -hmm. but on and on Hancock Park and some of the yeah, neighbors around here said fortunately. they could get it to keep mm -hmm. that architecture, which is so yes. important. Because yes. that's the strength mm -hmm. of the community. It's still here today. And, uh, that's right. and the, uh, the uh, zoning, the appropriate mm -hmm. zoning on Wilshire yes. to not overwhelm it, like it you see yes. out maybe in Westwood mm -hmm. where the towers mm -hmm. dwarf the neighborhood. Uh, in, oh, yeah. Well, that switch. was the Park Miles specific plan, and right. that was a very good thing yeah. to happen because that yeah. did prevent a lot of high rise from coming onto Wilshire Boulevard. I, I remember a young guy in mm -hmm. the office would come in and volunteer mm -hmm. from the neighbor, John Wellboard. I know he's doing something else. <laughs> I've now, heard of him. Yeah, yes. I heard him on that deal there. But mm -hmm. it is very special. Los Angeles, up until 1930, was 90% single family dwelling. Mm -hmm. So these yeah. homes were the big mm -hmm. homes of the city. Yes. And they preserved it. A lot of the people who worked downtown mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, lived here and yeah. uh, uh, commuted downtown. The yeah. uh, streetcar came out here to Largemont, That's which was right. interesting. Yes. Now the subway may get out mm -hmm. to, uh, hopefully, yeah. all the way out to the ocean someday. <laughs> yeah, so, we shall see. But uh, on the, mm -hmm. the neighborhood leadership has have been helpful, and you were very close uh, to that. Both. Uh, oh, yeah. I think uh, the Hancock Park Homeowners Association, mm -hmm. which really... Um, has done so much for this community, and I do mention it in the book and some of the projects that they've done, the, the street light. Um, they were going to come in and do uh, these huge cobra lights, right. and uh, uh, Jim Wolf pioneered to have the, the original lights kept, but brighter uh, wattage inside right. them. Right, and uh, just to give mm -hmm. credit to your cousins to the east, Mike mm -hmm. Cornwell, I believe it was, and mm -hmm. they were the, they, we saved those lights because they had the WS on the mm -hmm. bottom. Yes. The lights were installed by the developers mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. came in, not the city. Oh. But when the city mm -hmm. wanted to, had to take them over, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted uniform and yeah. uh, those mm -hmm. tall, bright lights. Yeah. But there was a change, and it helped change in the mm -hmm. rest of the city as well yeah. to save the historic lights, which matched the yeah. beautiful buildings. That's right. And also you have the mm -hmm. Wilshire Country Club, mm -hmm. which yeah. has a... Uh, Creek that goes through it, yeah. which goes from the mm -hmm. Bronson Caves in Griffith Park, where Superman, uh, not Superman, Batman, excuse mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Batman came racing out. Mm -hmm. but that little creek goes all the way through the undergrounds. Yeah. As you know, and mm -hmm. uh, then yeah, comes through and goes, goes through. to Brookside. Yes. Ends up mm -hmm. in uh, Biona yeah. Creek out in the marina. Well, I think uh, we were very fortunate that friends came to Alan Hancock uh, around 1919 and said, you ought to put a golf course here because your oil wells are drying up and you've got a lot of land. And he thought it was a great idea. So 105 acres were leased. And of course, they paid that off in no time. Wow. And uh, houses were uh, built all around the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, there were he by the time of 1925, he had developed 13 tracks in this neighborhood, and uh, brought in the, and the owners that bought these brought this land, brought in the best architects. Right. Like Paul Williams and Wallace Neff and. Uh, Oh, just yeah, uh, the Paul top. Williams, mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul Yeah, he Lord. was uh, he was one Very of a kind. Special. He and was. there's a one <laughs> building that reminds me of the architect from Loyola High School. It's on mm -hmm. Murfield. I I got to dig mm -hmm. into the book and yeah. find out uh, <laughs> a little more about that. And, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know. Mm -hmm. Just a side note. I don't know if mm -hmm. it made your book, but there was a time where mm -hmm. they had to upgrade the concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, for the sidewalks mm -hmm. at Fifth and McCadden. This yeah. was like in 2014 or whatever. And we didn't do that in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but the neighborhood fought mm -hmm. hard for it, and yeah. now they're mm -hmm. getting that done. But the first crews, just to let you know, and uh, mm -hmm. all the people out there are listening, were crews from mm -hmm. LAX who were building mm -hmm. the runways out at LAX. We borrowed mm -hmm. them for a few days, and oh. they got it in there. So it, it has made the mm -hmm. neighborhood very special, yeah. like John Burroughs mm -hmm. Middle School, very mm -hmm. special school. Third Street Elementary, yeah. very special. The history, mm -hmm. Black Fox, yeah. uh, right oh, yeah. Marlboro, mm -hmm. uh, just on the edge. Yeah, great, great schools, in, schools in the neighborhood. The neighborhood strong. Um, and you talk about uh, preservation. The palm trees on Highland yes. were threatened, and mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, hug the trees. They wouldn't let the right. people, uh, the, the city come and uh, knock them down. And I know you've been very helpful with that media and keep, right. keeping those palm trees yeah. watered. And, uh, right, over the years. Mm -hmm. John Ferraro yeah. stepped in. I think mm -hmm. they wanted to put traffic pockets yeah. to go left turn. Mm -hmm. Charlie yeah. kept the traffic going north, south, right. and east, west, so, so which is good. Yeah. But uh, it, it's a wonderful, this book that we mm -hmm. have here and all the Good things there. That, uh, oh, what are yeah. some of your memories of the parties that you've probably gone to thousands of parties over the years? Oh, interesting Backyard parties. parties you know, the backyard. Interesting. Um, yeah. Elaborate. I, I can remember uh, when we first started the paper, women would come in and give me calling cards. I mean, I, I was blown away. <laughs> calling cards? But, uh, and they're, they never used their own names, they used their husband's name. Uh -huh. It was always Mrs. William Bancroft, you know, never Sally Bancroft. And so I have memories from the paper, but I didn't put those in. That's a whole nother book. Well, that's <laughs> good. We're looking forward Large to that Mark book. Chronicle. You know, the Large Mark Chronicle. That's the title. <laughs> that's a good title there. Yeah. So it's just crossed there. And then it mm -hmm. has a little here about the pilots and the flights. Oh, yeah. Hancock uh, was so magnanimous. Uh, but he had tragedy in his in his family. His uh, twenty his son died tragically at the Santa Barbara earthquake in 1925. Wow! And so when Hancock went and, and bought all kinds of acreage in Santa Maria, he uh, also started an uh, airfield, an air and a school for pilots, and it was named in his son's honor. Right. And uh, the house that Hancock lived in uh, he, when he was here in Hancock Park is uh, all intact. It's at uh, uh, 6th and uh, uh, Hudson. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you mentioned the pilots. Uh, Hancock underwrote the, uh, the trip that two pilots took to the Southern Cross down to Australia. Uh -huh. It was the first, uh, first such flight. Right. And he, he gave money to music schools in the Philharmonic, and he also he played the cello, and he played at Hollywood Bowl in the summer, and he didn't take any money for right. it. He would just say, why don't you give out tickets to people who can't yeah. afford them? Yeah. And he um, 
was a sailor, a very avid sailor. And he would turn um, boats into floating hotels. I mean, they were just people, uh, Bud Mullen in particular told me what, what a joy it was to be on one of Alan Hancock's trips. They went up to Alaska or down to the Galapagos and they did a lot of uh, research. Uh, Jack Cousteau was one of his um, uh, guests aboard. One of, he had four ships. They were all called Valero, which is sailor <clears throat> in Spanish. So uh, he was a very colorful person. He did an awful lot, but his, his whole family was colorful. His uh, right. father-in-law was uh, quite a character. And uh, he was called the father of California wine. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to get a, get a little water. I know they wine. had a junior college uh, in mm -hmm. Santa Maria, Alan mm -hmm. Hancock Junior College. Yes. Right there. So his thing. name is pretty famous up right, there. Right, in California, which is good there. And you mm -hmm. got the streets. You got uh, mm -hmm. uh, Melrose, uh, mm -hmm. Beverly, uh, Third Street, Sixth Street, yeah. and then Wilshire. Mm -hmm. You go yeah. in there and then Highland well, and Rossmore. Well, Wilshire's a whole nother <laughs> story, that's too. That's a whole nother book, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, Gaylord just Wilshire. Just trying to get you plugged in, you know, <laughs> which is so good. But, uh, yeah. You think about the, our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. even surrounding from Hancock Park to the mm -hmm. Miracle Mile to mm -hmm. Hollywood to mm -hmm. uh, Windsor Square. And mm -hmm. I know there's, yeah. it would be interesting if there was a f football match between uh, Windsor Square and uh, Hancock, Hancock Park. Park or a soccer match <laughs> or whatever. It would be fun to see the yeah, communities right. go. But uh, uh, it's mm -hmm. a beauty, which is so there. And it's maintained its excellence really the it whole, really has. whole time, which and, is uh, good. And one, one of the really good things is like the Amundsen Field. Uh -huh. Remember that? Where right. it was adjacent to the country club, right. but they finally sold it so the kids had no place to play right. ball. Right. So then they were able to go over to John Burroughs. Right, thanks to Kathleen Brown, mm -hmm. uh, who was the uh, school board. That was the first time a public mm -hmm. school opened their gates for that. And yeah. But you all got to thank Bob Amundsen for mm -hmm. so much that he did. Now Bill, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's at the observatory or yeah. they got their fingerprints all over and they mm -hmm. still live in the neighborhood. God bless yes. Bob. But Bill mm -hmm. and his wife Carla, who's mm -hmm. on those police boards. Yeah. There's a lot of active people. Oh, there. my, there. Yeah. The chief of police lived here, Mr. Uh, Redden. Well, Redden, Tom. And Redden Benny lived was here. A, a yeah. member of the library mm -hmm. yeah. department uh, commission, which was so good. Right. Contributing to it. Oh, yeah. So We've well. had so many activists here. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what made my job at the Larchmont Chronicle so easy because people were always out there doing good things. And, right, uh, pick it up. Yeah, really phone. good. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you were the team of mm -hmm. folks in the library department upgraded mm -hmm. John C. Fremont, another mm -hmm. historic oh, name. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The library up there, right yeah. on the edge, uh, which mm -hmm. is so important yeah. on that. And then in the east, the mm -hmm. Wilshire branch, all the public libraries is really yeah. uh, special, you know, they for are. our community. They're, they're great. They have yeah. terrific programs for the neighborhood. And, yeah. and uh, just, I mean, there have been so many interesting things. I mean, you know, they've been... Um, the Garden Club. I mean, uh -huh. just, you know, promoting uh, gardens and helping neighborhoods that need help with gardens. And, um, I, I mean, the Assistance League, the Junior League, uh, well, so many of these organizations, the women in this neighborhood right. were very active. You often find the fingerprints mm -hmm. of Hancock Park mm -hmm. residents in other neighborhoods. I know the work yeah. they do. Uh, mm -hmm. with Sister Ann, used to be with Sister oh, Julia yes. Mary mm -hmm. at the Good Shepherd Center and yes. all the, the And the impact, Meals on Wheels. All that Sister yeah. Alice Marie and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Daryl Trainer, who mm -hmm. uh, yeah, is a saint. The, yeah. And the impact players, so mm -hmm. to speak, in our community, which is Definitely. so important yes. there. Yeah. I, I, uh, and I, I just think it's just so special mm -hmm. that uh, you were able to capture yeah. so much in mm -hmm. this book, which is an easy read, mm -hmm. but a fun read all the way around. Yeah. And, and the architecture yeah. mm -hmm. of all the homes, which is such a key. Yeah. And explaining things that I don't even know, you know. <laughs> what? That, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> don't I don't know. know. I don't know much, you know. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. I wonder, the tennis uh, mm -hmm. uh, center is uh, Tennis nice. club. Tennis yeah. club, you know, right in the neighborhood mm -hmm. there. I yeah. Know, uh, which was, I know, mm -hmm. a deputy of mine uh, was mm -hmm. always up there after they finished their work. Yeah. Carolyn Ramsey, I know, mm -hmm. who's now mm -hmm. at the Park Foundation. And, yeah. But it was fun. They used to have big tournaments there. Mm -hmm. and 
Oh, yeah. You know? but Both, I think the other thing, too, what this mm -hmm. book does is, mm -hmm. is you see the improvements in neighborhoods adjacent mm -hmm. to yeah. Hancock Park. Mm -hmm. North of Melrose mm -hmm. now, it's transforming and, yeah. and upgrading, mm -hmm. which is important for yeah. all of us and mm -hmm. putting new life in yeah. the neighborhoods. Well, you once asked me what I thought the future of Hancock Park mm -hmm. was. And I'm a little concerned because even now in Sacramento, there are uh, assemblymen who are trying to convince us that we should have duplexes or right. you know, just to, to um, increase the housing uh, in R1 zones. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's scary. It really is. I, I, I'm not sure just what direction we'll be going. Well, I think it's got to be explained better. The mm -hmm. cities are great with their neighborhoods. And where there needs to be density, you put the density. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why Hollywood has mm -hmm. a lot of density there. The subway's mm -hmm. going there. Wilshire yeah. will have density down near the Miracle mm -hmm. Mile and beyond. Uh, yes. And these other neighborhoods. But people, whether it's from San Pedro to Chatsworth, mm -hmm. love the neighborhoods of all different degrees. If and, they can uh, you know, maintain them, right, preserve maintain them, them. Which they do here in this yeah. part. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see a rebirth of all these neighborhoods now, too, which... Or yeah. key, but where mm -hmm. there's the commercial area, the need mm -hmm. for density, we have a little density just north of uh, mm -hmm. Hancock Park, up uh, mm -hmm. Wilcox, up towards mm -hmm. the police station, fire yeah. station, up in that area. Uh, so it has a balance out. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah. the guy, I haven't met the guy from San Francisco who's mm -hmm. been pushing all that, but San Francisco mm -hmm. is 49 square miles. And we're a much larger city where we yeah. can balance and meet the need, but also balance. Well, keep I, the neighborhoods out. I hope you're right yeah. because uh, these uh, these homes are are just uh, museum pieces in a right. way. They, they really are. And uh, I just would like to see the neighborhood maintained and, and safeguarded. And I think with the uh, Hancock Park homeowners and the other neighborhood groups that uh, we're in good shape. Right, it's good to have mm -hmm. a voice. Yeah, you know, that's they so are, important. They are that. there. So you have any questions of me? That, did I miss anything when I uh, was the council? Uh, okay, what about, what was on page 42? 42, it was all about, uh, <laughs> you know, you're very good. No, but it was for me working mm -hmm. in yeah. this neighborhood mm -hmm. for uh, 27 years before I became a councilman. Mm -hmm. That's was, right, was yeah. was a lot of fun. And uh, when I speak to mm -hmm. uh, uh, classes at universities and colleges, I talk mm -hmm. about how in a local situation, mm -hmm. you should be out there as yeah. much as you can. And working mm -hmm. for John Farrar, who's a big citywide leader, yes. uh, mm -hmm. it came to me that I had to you know, do mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff that a council mm -hmm. person would do, because yeah. he had big city issues to mm -hmm. handle. And I remember if someone yeah. called uh, and needed a, a new trash can because mm -hmm. of uh, one reason or another, I'd go over to the yard and talk mm -hmm. to the guys. I'd take it out there. Yeah, you, know? you were a well, hands-on guy. Hands-on guy. It, it was fun, number one. Yeah, you spoiled and, uh, us. Number two, it, uh, mm -hmm. they, it's mm -hmm. just service, and that's yeah. what it's, uh, mm -hmm. you want when you're yeah. in a community here. Well, so I probably, in the book, don't credit the city as much as I should. Yeah, yeah. it's all right. But we're mm -hmm. fortunate. We have a fire station 61 mm -hmm. serving the west mm -hmm. side. Of 52. 52s, as mm -hmm. well as... Uh, 29s, mm -hmm. and all those yeah. buildings uh, mm -hmm. used to be old buildings, and yeah. they now have been mm -hmm. new fire stations, mm -hmm. uh, which have been upgraded uh, for us. Which we is have good. a great police department yeah. and a community uh, advisory board that supports right. the police. Wilshire the, is very good, and mm -hmm. Olympic is very yeah. good. And That's right. I, uh, mm -hmm. I always like to tease people who went to L.A. high school, because mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to John Marshall, and in 1971, mm -hmm. we had a horrific earthquake, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, both L.A. High and Marshall mm -hmm. were condemned, mm -hmm. but the Marshall yeah. fought to save their building, and mm -hmm. there wasn't a fight to save L.A., but I believe that mm -hmm. L.A. High School was one of the prettiest high schools, yes. that brick building, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so nice, and I remember somebody told me, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to think who it was, but somebody in Hancock Park said mm -hmm. when they first built L.A. High School, it was so mm -hmm. far west yeah. of town in mm -hmm. 1918 there was no houses around they thought who's building a high school that Guys, far out of town you read that right yeah, there right in, out of the book the, that's good inside hancock yeah, park inside hancock park <laughs>
Yes, so, so which is good. Kind of give me credit. But it, these neighborhood books oh, are so important to learn mm -hmm. about yes. communities, and yeah. people want to learn about communities. I, I, I know you put a, a hit on uh, on the tour buses, but I I I know I look at that look at that, get that close up of that smile of Jane. <laughs> I would love to see architectural tours. Now they have them in mm -hmm. covered right. covered vans. I'll, all right, they do that, and then a lot of Hollywood. discreet. Not even a bus, uh, yeah. maybe a yeah. van. A van, a lot maybe of, a motorcycle. You see a lot of movies made in mm -hmm. Hancock Park. Fortunately, yeah, yeah that's which is good. good. That's good. You know, which is uh, good for the jobs and uh, so. good for Hollywood all the way around. So this has been very special for this me, been, Jane, to be is, with you. <laughs> this has uh, been great. On this night, and my wife Bridget says uh, best <laughs> wishes to you, and I want to encourage everybody to come into Smiley's <laughs> and get this great community book all about Hancock Park and learn about the neighborhoods of Los Angeles. It'll make you feel better about the City of Angels because <laughs> I'm sitting next to an angel, an angel <laughs> in the City of Angels, Jane you, Gilman. Love you. Okay, Thank you so much. Thank you for good coming. Luck. All right. Hold that up. Get a good shot of that. Come in tight. All right. <laughs>